Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Microsoft Ignite. Brought to you by Cohesity and theCUBE's ecosystem partners. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Microsoft Ignite. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman. We're joined by Michael Smith. He is the Director of Infrastructure at HKS. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Hey, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. So Mike, HKS, tell us, a little, you're based in Dallas, you're an architecture firm. Tell us about some of the big projects that you have worked on. Sure, yeah, so, uh, so I've been with the firm since April. Uh, really excited to get on board and, and really kind of understand the rich history. Um, we actually turned 80 this year, so uh, we'll have a really big celebration of the company. Um, so yeah, so HKS, um, you know, we do a lot, of, a lot of sports entertainment, so Dallas Cowboys, AT&T Stadium, uh, the Vikings home, LA Rams, so about 30% of our mix is sports entertainment. So you may not know the company, but you certainly know the, Some the well buildings known we design. Buildings, yeah. Exactly. Uh, actually, when you talk an 80-year-old firm, and I think of those two buildings, well, I'm a techie, I'm a sure. geek. There's a lot of technology that goes into that. I, I love just the viewpoint as to how the company looks because 80 years ago, I'm sure they didn't have the tech people in there. Design is very much what they're, how, how does that, you know, the, the, the culture and inside the company a little bit? Sure, yeah, so that's really the, that's really the neat thing, right? So is that everyone thinks that it's a, it's a company full of architects, right? And for the most part it is, but you know, so we have nurses on staff, right? Why? Because we build hospitals. Yeah. Um, we have people that understand how buildings work. So, um, so uh, uh, part of our five stakeholders, the, the community is actually one of those stakeholders. So, you know, we're not just listening to the, the client who's asking us how to build it. We're seeing how that building is going to fit into the community, into its surroundings, um, and how it's really going to interoperate because, right, because these buildings are, are going to be around for, what, you know, 10, 15, 20 years until the next one gets built. So what are you doing here at this conference? What, what, what are the kinds of peop people you want to meet, the kind of connections you want to make? Sure, yeah, so, so first off, I've made some great connections, um, and that's one of the things I love about coming to, to things like Ignite. Um, this is my first time here, but uh, I just, I've, I've, I've loved it. Um, I tell you, I've really enjoyed hearing people and hearing about uh, the same challenges that I'm facing, and then under understanding how you know, they're using the various pieces of technology to kind of piece that together. All right, so Mike, you're director of infrastructure, so we, we know infrastructure well. It is our first time at this show, but we've been doing infrastructure shows for, for, for many years. Maybe give us a little bit about your background sure. and what, you know, what's under your domain uh, at, at HKS. Sure, yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, so I've worked for the last 20 years um, in mainly for architectural engineering firms, right? And, so, and there's a lot to be said for understanding the specific industry that you're working in, right? So, um, you know, obviously uh, it, it's not just about uh, Word documents and Excel files, right? You're talking about very large CAD files and having to traverse uh, from office to office, right? Um, and so you have to have a very robust infrastructure. Um, so yeah, so I've got basically uh, the entire uh, networking servers, WAN, LAN, internet, VoIP, um, oh yeah, and I've got cybersecurity under my profile as well. So uh, we run a small shop at HKS, but um, uh, yeah, so the you know, company's doing really, really well, and um, we've got 24 offices globally, 19 here in the U.S., and, uh, and like I said, we manage that uh, really a 24-7 you know, shop, so. All right, so uh, you've got a number of locations. Uh, when we, we, we talk to infrastructure people, the, the role of data and how do I manage it, how do I do things like disaster recovery uh, and, and the like usually are, are pretty important. How, how is it in your world? Yeah, so, so obviously, you know, disaster recovery, to me, I, that, that's the backbone of IT, right? Specifically of my group. Um, and if, if we can't do that right, if we can't do uh, data protection correctly, then to me, we really shouldn't be working on any other project. Um, and that's really where Cohesity comes into the equation, right? So uh, when I came on board, we had a legacy solution. It was working, right? Um, it just, uh, talking with the business, really partnering and understanding what their expectations were, we realized that there were some gaps. And, uh, and ended up uh, talking through talking to Cohesity through a vendor. Um, did an amazing whiteboarding session with just some folks that uh, I really felt like cared about and understood our business. Um, and then, yeah, so we've, we've been, I guess since about uh, mid-July, we've been implemented on, on our Cohesity solution for data protection globally. Um, we're about 75% of the way there in, in what, just a month and a half? So from a speed of implementation standpoint, right? Um, but you know, we've really made some leaps and bounds, uh, gains in kind of uh, those requirements that our customers are asking of us and kind of returning, you know, basically returning them back to work. Yeah, can, can you paint a little picture of kind of the before and after sure. for us? Sure, yeah, so, so you know, we've, we've always had a cloud strategy, right? So we've been partnered with Microsoft for, for several years. Uh, great, you know, Office 365, we've used Azure for backup. 
Um, but I wouldn't say that it was really an optimized, it was an optimized solution. And so, you know, if, if we had an actual outage, uh, what we were talking about is, you know, a, a, a fairly long time to pull those resources back down to on-prem. And so, um, you know, so what we've, what we've implemented with our, our Cohesity solution is basically a system now where when our customers come in, in 95% of the time, they can get their files back on the phone with the first level technician. So before, I was going to a third level sysadmin, basically requiring them to stop what they're doing, work on their, their restore, right? And in some instances, it may have been a day before we return that customer back to work. So if you can think about the ability to you know, really just return them back into their normal work process, almost instantaneously, right? I mean, the RTO is, uh, it's really incalculable when you start talking about soft dollars like that. Well, to talk about, you, you mentioned how coming here you talk with a lot of people in your industry, or people but maybe not even in your industry, but you realize you all share similar challenges. I mean, you just talked about the disaster recovery and how that can really keep you up at night. Can you talk about a few of the other problems and challenges that you encounter and how Cohesity has, has, has helped you? Sure. Yeah, so you know, I, I think obviously in the forefront of everybody's mind is security, right? And the fact that I have security within my group. Um, so you know, understanding that um, in the topics of you know data in motion, data at rest, right? Topics of encryption. Um, so you know, all of our data um, as it's pulled into a Cohesity is encrypted, um, and so obviously then as that sits in Azure, that's encrypted. So that that transaction is secure. Um, you know, I think the, the overall management of the infrastructure, uh, so, so really having that single pane of glass that Cohesity can offer, um, that was a huge challenge when I came on board because we were the, the, the solution that we were using was really meant for file replication. And so in order to find out if something worked, we had to go to 81 disparate sources to see if that worked, right? And so, you know, today I can come in in the morning, I got a guy that starts at 6 a.m., God bless him, and uh, you know, by the time I get in, anything that happened overnight is completely remediated. I can look at one single pane of glass, I can see a bunch of green, and, and honestly, if there's red, I can see it. And I know that something failed and I can pinpoint exactly what we need to do to fix it, so. Okay. Mike, you said you're about 75% on the way, way, way deployed. Uh, walk us through where you're going with it, what you've been learning along the way, and any lessons learned along the way that you, know, uh, you could share with your peers as to uh, you know, how the experience has been, what they might want to do to you know, optimize things. Sure, yeah, so I think, um, you know, we're, like I said, we're about 75% of the way. We've got a lot of our international sites that are coming on board now. Um, we're learning a lot about our network, right? We're learning a lot about um, you know, different things, and so I would say, you know, b before you do an implementation of this size, really make sure that you have a good handle on patching, right? Making sure that all of your resources are patched, right? The last thing you want to do is find out you have a, a resource problem with you know, slow latency and it's due to a, a, a patch not being applied, right? Um, and then just understanding you know, the timeframes involved, right? So you know, we, we've targeted about 75 days to get fully on board, um, but we're talking almost a petabyte of data across you know, one gigabit connectivity, right? And so when you start talking about that, um, you know, there's a lot of, we're, we're doing a lot of mix and mashing and, and uh, bandwidth throttling and all that kind of fun stuff in order to get up and running. Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm kind of laughing a little bit over here because it's been a punchline in the Microsoft community. It's like, oh well, you know, is it Patch Tuesday yet or things right, like right, that. Right. It's, we've come so far yet, there's still uh, some, some things that hold us back. And that leads me to my next question is, you know, what, what, what's exciting you in the industry, in tech, and your job? You know, what, what's, what's working great? And what, uh, on the other hand, are you asking your vendors, what would, what would make your job and your group's job even better, whether that be Cohesity, Microsoft, or others? Yeah, so you know, I think as a, as a company that, so we have a lot of data, right? And at first, uh, as the role of the person responsible for that data, you know, it was, oh my gosh, we have a lot of data. And it was actually a couple of months ago, something clicked in my head, and I said, we have a lot of data, <laughs> right? And guess what? We can do analytics on that data. And so, you know, I think machine learning is going to be huge, right? Um, I think being able to do a lot of those tasks that we count on, you know, I have people that are doing things two to three times a week, maybe between eight and five. Well, those are things that with machine learning, right, we can have those algorithms basically running 24 seven. And so we can start making leaps and bounds um, progress over what we're doing today. Um, HKS is really big into understanding what the value add is uh, uh, in building a building, right? It's not just about the architecture. There's value to that. And so what other value items can we provide um, to our customers, right? That because, you know, to be, let's be honest, with technology is becoming a commodity, right? Well, how much longer before core services, like your architecture and your engineering, start to become commodities? 
And so that's really where I think uh, analyzing that data, um, and, and so I was at VMworld a few weeks ago, and I was talking to a Cohesity engineer, and I really expected him, I said, what's next on the roadmap from data analytics? And I expected to hear X, Y, and Z. And he looked at me and he goes, what do you want to see what's next? What do you want to do with your data? Let's partner with you and make that happen, right? Now, I'm smart enough to go, I, I don't know what that next thing is, but we have really smart, you know, PhD type people that do. So really looking forward to that next phase. I'm interested in, in teams, because you talked about the very, the, a very diverse employee base at HKS. You said you've got nurses on the team, I'm imagining you have hospitality experts, you've got the PhD types, sure. you've got the, the, the science people, and the architects. Yep. So how do you get all these people with very uh, different functional expertise to work together and pull together and all be on the same page? Yeah, that's actually a great question. So, uh, interestingly enough, uh, I sit right next to a librarian. <laughs> and, and she's in IT, right? And they work in our global knowledge management group, which does SharePoint, right? So who better to understand how to start to classify and organize information than someone who's a trained librarian, right? So um, I think what we're, what we're really excited about is our IT team has really been really rebuilt, say over the last two years, and it's been rebuilt with people who have a real passion for their industry, but also kind of a broad understanding of how everything interconnects. And so um, we're really kind of building a culture that says um, if there's information there, it's, it's shareable, right? But we're not holding anything close to the vest. If you want to understand, if I use too many acronyms when I talk, then ask me what they are, right? Um, and so you know, I think that right there, that fosters a lot more involvement and people give more of themselves incrementally you know, when they understand that, you know, hey, there's skin in the game, and, and yes, I'm a librarian, and I may not know the technological things that you do, but if I say, well, hey, what if we do it this way? You know, we're not just going to blow that idea off, and we're going to actually incorporate that into the greater solution. Great. Uh, Mike, I, I, I talk a lot about AI at the show and IOT, and you're doing buildings. I'm curious how things like all the sensors and everything impact what you're doing, how you, how you partner uh, with, with your clients on that. Sure, yeah. So we've, we've got a great team that really focuses on that, that entire uh, extended set of technologies. Um, so you know, obviously drone technology, sensor technologies. Um, and so I think a lot of those, um, you know, those are, I, I won't even say that they are even forward looking anymore. Right, those are especially sensor technology, right? So I mean, you know, I've 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 worked in environments where we had you know 24 by 7 cameras on a job site, right? So a general contractor probably hates it, but a PM from anywhere in the world can look at his project, uh, his or her project, and they can see their progress, right? Well, you know, then at what point does that extend to? Well, I'm going to launch a drone here, and I'm going to go look at a very specific piece and a very part of that technology, um, and so. Yeah, I think, I think you know, it's one of those things, if you ever start sitting on your laurels in IT, if your feet ever get off of the, the toes, right, moving forward, you're already behind. So, you know, I think things like AI and machine learning, you know, I, I've talked to some people that are like, well, we're two to three years away from that. And I said, in two to three years, those will be things of the past, right? You have to, you know, you don't have to be bleeding edge, but you have to understand where you can leverage those technologies for your business. Give us a little candy here. What, paint a picture of what the, the building of the future is, whether it's the stadium of the future, the hotel of the future, just get us excited here. What, sure, what are some yeah. of the things that you're, that you're looking yeah, so, at? So I actually talked to a gentleman a couple weeks back and they're, they're building a hotel. And, and this hotel has, has Bluetooth sensors in the room, right? Um, can't do any kind of cameras or anything yeah, like that. <laughs> but basically what it can do is based upon the signal saturation of the Bluetooth, it can tell you how many people are in that room because it understands the dissipation of the signal through the normal human body, right? So take that down to uh, like your typical occupancy sensor, right? That so you leave the room, um, may maybe you're, you're sleeping late, right? Well the room doesn't think anybody's in there, so it turns the temperature up, turns the lights on, does whatever it does, right? Well with this new technology, right, it can't do that. So fast forward on and maybe it's a little bit more scary. So now you, you go from your room and you walk down to the lobby bar, you walk past the lobby bar, well, the, the wireless devices know the MAC address of your phone because you use that number when you checked in. So as you get close, it pops you a, hey, you want a 15% or how about you want a free drink at the bar if you come in here, right? So I think uh, uh, understanding the connectiveness of everything, right? And then really not being afraid of it. Um, I mean, there is a big brother aspect to all of this, but just kind of understanding that, you know, kind of in the, the Elon Musk vein, right, is that, is that we have to understand and we have to control where that technology is going. Um, but I think if you're afraid of it like that, right, and you, you know, well, I'm, not gonna, I'm never going to stay at that hotel because of the things that they do, then I, I think you're missing out, so. Right, exactly.
Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Mike. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Yeah, thank a you so much. A lot of fun talking the opportunity. to you. Yeah, great. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. We will have more from Microsoft Ignite here in Orlando, Florida, coming up just after this. Thank <laughs> you.